Developing a life that follows after Christ. How can we be certain that we're truly saved? Clearly understanding the doctrine of justification by faith alone is essential if we are to have assurance of our salvation. Hello, I'm Lynetta. I'm Patrick. And together we are co-founders of Vertical, Vertical Connections, Connections Inc. Inc. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Yeah. Be sure to subscribe. Everyone click the like button, the bell icon, and share this message. Also, we greatly appreciate when you leave comments and we look forward to those in the future. How is it possible for somebody to be unsaved and be sure that they are saved? Hmm. They have a misunderstanding <laughs> yeah. of either the terms of salvation or a misunderstanding of their own self-evaluation of whether or not they have met the terms of what it means to be saved or not. The Apostle Peter commands us to make our calling and election sure. So you and I having assurance of our salvation is important. Assurance is an important topic and so many practical implications for our growth and Christian life. So why do so many people think they're saved when they're not? And mm. why do so some sincerely, sincere followers of Christ wrestle with doubts? The first part of our study and why it's so important to understand the doctrine of justification is to understand if we are to have genuine assurance. When we deal with the whole question of salvation, it is customary in theology, which mm -hmm. is the study of God, to look at salvation in the broad sense and then its constituent parts. And part of the systematic theology is to examine the order of salvation. Because the whole of salvation is made up of the individual parts that happen in sequence consecutively, mm -hmm. We begin our life when God breathes into us the life of the Spirit and causes us to be born again. And out of that regeneration comes the human response of faith and repentance. At that moment, we believe in Christ, embrace Christ, and repent of our sins. The next great moment in our salvation is, of course, our justification. Yes. But even though justification stands at the beginning of a new life in Christ, at that moment, we believe in Christ truly believe in Christ and truly trust in him, Christ at that instant, God reckons to us, attributes to us the righteousness of Christ and we are declared just. Absolutely. Luther expressed the concept with the phrase that the Christian who is justified is simul ustus et peccator. These four Latin words simply mean that we are at the same time just and sinner. Now, how can that be? It sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. On the surface, we are just okay. by virtue of the righteousness of Christ, which is given to us, transferred to our account. God imputes the righteousness of Jesus to you. That's the basis of your justification. But in and of yourself, you remain a sinner. That's the whole point of the Protestant doctrine or justification, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us and Christ secures our redemption. He doesn't wait for us to be worthy of salvation. He doesn't wait for us to become holy before we're counted as righteous because without him, we cannot. Now, when we, when we talk about that in terms of the order of salvation, we say justification is at the beginning of the Christian life. Right. And then the rest of the pilgrimage we call the process of sanctification. Mm -hmm. Now, the great dispute in the 16th century between the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church in the most simple elementary form can be reduced to this basic problem that for Rome, justification follows sanctification. You must be sanctified before you're securely justified, and that's why Rome also denies any possibility in this world, apart from the extraordinary, immediate, special revelation of God directly communicated to you that you are secure in His arms. We cannot have assurance of salvation mm -hmm. because we never know that the next day might be the occasion when we sin, commit a moral sin, right. die in a mortal sin, and lose it all. So we will not be truly finally justified unless mm. or until we first are sanctified. The Protestant doctrine, on the other hand, reverses the order and says we are justified first. 
as Abraham was, the moment he believed he was justified. Paul spends time on this in Romans 4. Mm -hmm, he does, extensively. Mm -hmm. And that's the beginning of this pilgrimage whereby sanctification is that process by which we work out our salvation, grow in grace, and become conformed to Christ. So even the word salvation is confusing because it's used in different tenses in the Bible. In one text, you will read that we were saved from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. And in the next sentence, we were being saved. Or we are saved, or we are being saved, which should suggest that we're still in the process. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about how we shall be saved. Because, again, the term salvation is such a broad concept. We are justified the moment we believe, but that's, but that's only one part of the whole process of salvation. Now we are concerned about the process of sanctification, making the progress in our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Now from that perspective, it's impossible to be sanctified unless you were first justified. Now, it's possible to be justified and not know it. It's possible to be mm -hmm. in the state of grace and not be aware of it. Right. And so, when you're working out your sanctification, which follows from your justification, but you're not sure about your justification, that's a sense in which a very oppressive weight of anxiety intrudes into the life of a Christian and makes that Christian pilgrimage towards sanctification, which is a struggle to begin with, all the more burdensome. Living moment to moment in mortal fear that our efforts are not good enough, but our progress is not far enough, and that we can be robbed at that point of peace. That is the legacy of Jesus, yes, the is. peace with God, which Paul tells us is the first fruit of justification, and we then become locked in an inner torment which is one of the most defeating things for spiritual growth. We must understand at the beginning of our spiritual lives whether or not we are truly in a state of grace. When we talk about the assurance of salvation, we need to speak about the problem of assurance that can be addressed by looking at four different groups of people in the world. The first group includes those who are not in the state of grace. Mm -hmm. They are unsaved, they are unredeemed, they are strangers to the covenant, they are foreigners. That group is redeemed, is unredeemed and unsaved. They stand outside of the kingdom of God. Now, this first group of people is that group of people who are unsaved and know it. They know that they're out of grace. They know that they're out of fellowship with God. And they know that they're strangers to the king. That's group number one. Group two are those people who are in the state of grace. They know it, they're redeemed, and they know that they are redeemed. They have security of where they stand within the fellowship of Christ. The third group is the people who are in a state of grace, but who aren't sure of it yet. So they are saved and they don't know it. So there are the three different groups of people that are very easy to delineate or describe. The first three groups of people are those who are unsaved and know that they are unsaved. Then there are those who are saved and know that they are saved. And there are those who are saved and don't know that they are saved. Those are pretty straightforward, right? Yes. It's the fourth category that muddles everything. And next week, we will share who the group represents and how it is disordered or confusing. We thank you for joining us and look forward to continuing this message on assurance and justification with you next time. So until then, get connected to, to Go, Go Vertical. Bye-bye.